The story begins with a group of adventurers up against a deadly S-ranked forest dragon. It breathes fire, causing massive destruction to the area, and the adventurers are forced to run. Elsewhere in a field, we meet a young farmer named Al Lane. He tends to his crops and is pleased with how well everything is growing. He harvests some of the crops and prepares to head to the markets. He gets an alert from his status window and sees that his farming skills have all been maxed out, reaching level 10. He is joined by his friend, the fisherman Tester, who is amazed at his achievement. Tester is even a little jealous that Al has a level 10 fishing skill when he is supposed to be the fisherman. Al maxed out all his farming skills and suddenly gets a special option to integrate and evolve his skills. He accepts it and gains the title of the nature lover. Al is confused about what this means, but Tester sees that he suddenly has 65,000 status points and over 73,000 attacks and 45,000 defenses. They're shocked, but Al remembers he needs to get to the market. Al heads off to the royal capital to sell his crops. Along the way, he sees a dragon attacking the adventurers. They're no match and call for a retreat. Help me! Al decides to help and throws a carrot, hoping to distract the dragon, but the carrot hits and the dragon explodes with a single blow. The adventurers are left shocked and confused about what happened. And Al is also surprised by his newfound strength. He quickly heads on his way, and the adventurers only see his trail. Al makes it to the royal capital Magus, but while he is at the gate, there's a girl being kidnapped. A hooded man comes charging through, but Al jumps forward and saves the girl. The hooded man attacks Al with a knife, but Al easily disarms and defeats him. Nice. The man is arrested, and the girl thanks Al for saving her. When they hear a bell, Al quickly rushes off, not wanting to be late. The girl asks for his name, but Al quickly speeds off and leaves. He makes it to the market and delivers his crops. As he goes to leave the city, he gets stopped by the guards. Al thinks he might be in trouble, but the girl he saved appears and introduces herself as Phallus, the princess of the capital. Al becomes nervous talking to the princess, but she orders him just to treat her casually. She asks if he would be willing to serve the royal family. He says hell no, <laughs> but only in his mind. Instead, he carefully tries to decline, saying he can't handle the responsibility. He tries to leave, but Phallus catches him. She tells him that they would pay him well, but Al says he is only interested in being a farmer. Hearing this, Phallus offers to give him a huge field near the capital that's over 33,000 square meters. Al asks why she is willing to go so far just to recruit him. She tells him it's because he was able to so easily defeat the hooded man, who had a strength of over 500. Al asks what the average strength is, and Phallus explains that the average person has a strength of around 50, adventurers are around 130, knights are up to 600, and the legendary hero has a thousand. Phallus asks to see his status. But Al knows he can't show her. Then the adventurers return and report that the forest dragon was defeated. However, they don't know who did it, only that there was a carriage. Hearing the report, Phallus suspects it was Al. But while they were distracted, Al quickly ran away from the gate. Despite this, Phallus remains determined to recruit him. Suddenly, a guard tells Phallus she is being called to return to the palace. There is a report that a large swarm of monsters is approaching the capital. They're coming from the Hal Zone, which shocks the king because the leader of the Hell Zone, the Demon King, was killed by the hero. And they made a peace pact with the demons. We meet Officer Cecil. He suggests that not all demons are happy with the peace pact, especially the first general of the Demon King, Romeo Van. He suspects that they found out that the hero passed away and now wants revenge for the death of the Demon King. He advises that the king leaves the capital for his own safety. The king doesn't want to abandon his people, but all his soldiers beg him to survive. And Al finally makes it back home, accidentally destroying his door with his newfound strength. He is exhausted from his day, and Tessa suddenly comes knocking on his door. Tessa tells him they need to evacuate because an army of monsters is nearby. 
Al suddenly thinks of his crops and rushes to his field. He is relieved to see his crops are okay. The army of monsters passes by, and Al realizes they are heading straight for the capital. He doesn't want to get involved because he is just a farmer, but then realizes that if the capital falls, he will have nowhere to sell his crops. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Meanwhile, the king and princess have escaped from the capital, but they come to a dead end. The king is suddenly attacked with a blast of energy. Cecil transforms and reveals he is the demon General Romeo. He had been deceiving them from the very beginning. He reveals his plan to pose as the king by using his transformation magic and ruling the kingdom without the people knowing. But first, he must kill the king. He attacks with his dark magic, but the king creates barriers. But the barriers begin to break as the king struggles to maintain them. Phallus helps to reinforce the barrier, but Romeo unleashes a second attack. The barriers break, and the king can no longer maintain the barrier by herself. Phallus cannot defend against the attack, and the rest of the barriers are destroyed. Romeo goes to finish them off with his darkness skill, but Al suddenly appears and stops the attack. He uses his plowing skill and shatters the ground, disrupting the army of monsters. Romeo is curious about who he is, but Al just says he is an ordinary farmer. Romeo jumps behind him, but Al catches his blade and throws him away. <laughs> Romeo is impressed and decides to go all out. He absorbs the power from the nearby monsters and transforms into his true form. Looking at his status, Phallus sees that he is level 78 with over 5,000 strength. She tells Al to run away. Romeo unleashes his power and charges at Al, but Al counters with his punch, and Romeo is defeated. The monsters are shocked by Al because he won with one single punch, and all quickly run away. They return to the palace, and the king thanks him for defeating Romeo and saving their lives. But Al just says he did it because he wanted to protect his crops. The king asks him to serve the country, but Al declines, saying he only wants to be a farmer. The king offers to make him a commander or any title he desires, but Al remains determined to just be a farmer. As a reward, Phallus decides to give out the 33,000 square meter field near the kingdom, but on the condition that he registers as an adventurer so he can occasionally help out the kingdom. Al agrees with this deal, but when he goes to check out the field, he finds it is a complete wasteland, realizing he had been tricked by Phallus. The next day, Al explores the capital with Phallus, and he is amazed by all the different foods. Al asks her how she can just walk around the capital, but she tells him she has a maid acting as her substitute at the palace, and she uses a magical hairpin that stops people from recognizing her. Phallus takes Al to the Adventurer's Guild, and they are immediately greeted by the Guildmaster, who has heard the rumors of Al's strength. He takes Al over to the reception desk where they meet the secretary named Helen. Suddenly, Al's stomach growls loudly, so they first get him some food. Then suddenly, the adventurers from the previous day appear, thanking him for defeating the S-ranked dragon. Everyone in the guild is amazed, and Al becomes embarrassed. The adventurers introduce themselves as Jake, Luke, and Lamia, and then they wish him luck and tell him they should go hunting together. Al mentions to Helen he wants to try doing a quest, but she explains that adventurers are ranked from F rank up to double S rank, and because he is a new adventurer, he can only take on easy quests to begin with. She suggests starting with a quest to collect 10 herbs from the Grim Forest. Helen tells him he should get some equipment because there might be monsters, but Alf says he's too poor to afford any. Hearing this, Helen gives him her old cloak enhanced with magical defenses. Al is reluctant to accept it, but Helen insists and helps him put it on. Helen becomes dazzled seeing him in the cloak as he seems to remind her of a certain someone. She wishes him luck, but Al can only think about his farming life. Al heads out to the forest and collects the herbs. 
While he is collecting, he comes across a peculiar black scale. He wonders what monster could have dropped it, but suddenly gets approached by a female orc. Oh, hell no! It pounces no, on him, God, wanting to please, breed with no. him, but Jake appears and saves him. The orc is defeated, and Al thanks him for his help. He asks if they know more about the black scale. Jake has heard rumors of a black dragon, but doesn't believe it because black dragons dwell in the highlands and not the forests. Lania suggests he can sell it for a decent amount of money. Suddenly, there is a tremendous aura that overwhelms them, and they are frozen in fear as a black dragon emerges. Oh my god! The dragon is covered in darkness and walks right past them. Al is terrified but manages to take a look at its status, only to be shocked at its monstrous stats. The next day, Helen wakes up from her nightmare, and her mother notices that she doesn't look too well. Helen tells her that she is experiencing memory loss, unable to remember what she did after work the previous day. Her mother suggests that she is overworking and should have some time off. Al returns to the guild and has an urgent report. They meet with the guild master and report their encounter with the black dragon. According to now, it has a strength of over 230,000. Judging by its appearance, they suspect it to be the evil dragon. When they heard the news, they were shocked, especially Helen. Al shows them the black scale he found, and Helen is horrified seeing it. She has a memory of her brother running away and being killed by the dragon. It's too much for her, and she faints. Al is worried about Helen, but her mother tells him that she is going to be okay. She recognizes the cloak that Al is wearing and explains that she is Helen's adoptive mother. Fifteen years ago, she found Helen by the lake with a cloak. She remembered her name but lost all her other memories. She suspects Helen might have a connection to Honora village. Hearing this, Al is determined to help out. He heads to the library to learn more but fails to find any clues. He decides to look into the reports from 15 years ago, back when Helen was first found. Phallus suddenly appears, and they gain access to the records. They're led into the restricted area, and they check out the damage records for the village where Helen was found. Al finds out that 15 years ago, Honora village was destroyed, and there were black scales that were also found there. However, this incident was covered up because the evil dragon is meant to be dead. But if it has somehow been revived, it would mean the whole world is in danger. The next day, the two head to Honora village to check it out. They find it completely destroyed. Al suddenly hears a voice. He follows the voice, and they come to a grave, and a boy appears wearing the same cloak. Phallus is confused about who Al is talking to, because she is unable to see or hear him. Al realizes he is a ghost, and the boy introduces himself as Lei. The boy is glad to find someone that can finally see him, and notices that Al is wearing the same cloak as him. Al mentions how he got it from Ellen, and Lei is glad to hear she is well, revealing that he is her brother. He mentions how the cloak was a gift from his father and was magically enchanted. Al puts the cloak around Phallus so that she can see him, and she gets freaked out at his ghostly appearance. Lei continues to explain that Helen was the only survivor in the village, and says that she's in danger. There is a flashback to 15 years ago. Helen calls Lei for lunch while he is training with a sword but trips and falls over. Helen worries for him, but Lei wants to become a warrior. Suddenly, dark clouds roll in, and fire rains from the sky. They rush back to the village, only to find it burning and destroyed. The black dragon lands, giving off a terrifying roar. A young child stands up to it, throwing a rock at it. The dragon can speak and finds it outrageous that the boy can stand up to him. The dragon feeds off of their fear and destroys anyone who is hope. It opens its mouth, gathering dark energy as the boy becomes terrified. Helen and Lei watch from a distance but know that they are powerless to do anything. They decide that their only option is to run so they quickly leave the village. But as they run, the dragon flies overhead and finds them. They quickly run the other way, but the dragon flies after them, breathing fire. The dragon enjoys seeing them run in terror. Helen becomes exhausted and falls over. 
She tells Lei to go on without her, and the dragon lands behind her. The dragon prepares to devour her soul, but it gets hit in the eye as Lei throws his sword. But the sword did nothing, and the dragon turned its attention to Lei, deciding to eat him first. It lunges at Lei and impales him with its teeth. Helen rushes to her brother, and the dragon delights in her despair as it makes him stronger. The dragon decides to let Helen live but swears to return after 15 years to destroy her home again, causing her even more emotional damage and then feeding on her soul. Lei swears to protect Helen even in death. And hearing this, the dragon decides to bind his soul to the area so he can witness her grim fate. After that, the dragon disappears, and Lei fades away. Back in the present, Lei explains that the dragon always leaves one survivor so they can spread the story and create even more fear, and when it awakens, it will hunt down that person and repeat the cycle. Lei begs Al to help and protect Helen, but he says that the dragon is too strong. But Lei mentions how the dragon only ate his soul when he became despaired. He believes that they can use the power opposite of despair to diminish the dragon's power. Lei asks Al to help him pass a message on to his sister, and Al quickly heads off, carrying Phallus as he runs. They're in a hurry because today is exactly 15 years after the dragon's previous attack. They make it back to the city, and fortunately, the dragon has not appeared yet. The two go their separate ways as Al goes to find Alan, and Phallus prepares the guards. Back at the guild, Helen's mother goes to check up on her but finds that she's missing from her room. Helen walks alone in the forest, and soon the black dragon appears before her. It greets her after 15 years, and Helen's lost memories begin to return. She remembers that it was her fault that her brother died. The dragon reminds her how her brother would have gotten in the way if not for her. It says that because of her, all the people in the city will soon die. Helen begs for it not to attack the city, even offering her own life, but the dragon has no intention of letting anyone live. Helen despairs and prepares to end her life, but Al makes it to her just in time and stops her. <laughs> Helen comes to her senses, but the dragon attacks Al, knocking him away. Al manages to survive thanks to his cloak's protection. The dragon is shocked a human could survive his attack, but Al says he's not just a human, he's a farmer. <laughs> Helen tells him to run away, but Al strikes the dragon by punching it in the face. Al tells Helen not to worry, and the dragon is surprised a human was able to hurt him. The dragon wants to make them fall into despair, and the two begin to fight. The dragon rushes at him, attacking with its claw, and Al struggles to defend himself. Then Al lands another punch, but the dragon unleashes its devastating flame on him. Al is knocked away, and Helen tells him to leave her not wanting any more people to die because of her. But Al tells her that it's not her fault. He tells her how he met her brother, and her brother knew she would blame herself when she regained her memories, so he told Al to tell her that he doesn't blame her for his death. He's proud that he protected his sister and tells her to live happily for both of them. Al gives her hope, and the dragon's power begins to diminish. The dragon curses at Al and dives at them, but Al can overcome the weakened dragon, defeating it with a punch. <laughs> Al is finally able to relax, but just as he defeats the dragon, he suddenly gets stabbed by Helen. What? What the Al is confused and tries to grab a potion, but struggles and drops it. Helen attacks him again, and Al barely dodges. Al tries to ask her what's going on, but Helen charges to finish him off. But suddenly a wing gets in the way, and the holy dragon mirage appears, and reveals that Helen is being possessed by the evil dragon. The holy dragon heals Al, and lends him his powers, but ends up collapsing as a result of giving his power. The evil dragon laughs thinking Al wouldn't risk hurting Helen's body, but Al instantly punches him. The dragon is shocked, and Al can see in Helen's eyes that she wants him to stop her. Helen seems to return to herself, but as Al helps her up she grabs him, and the evil dragon's soul bursts out and dives into Al trying to possess him. He declares his victory but there is a problem inside Al is heart, there is only farming. He is shocked that there is nothing besides growing and harvesting crops, 
there is nothing he can corrupt, and he is rejected from Al, his body. The holy dragon gets back up and uses his power to purify the evil dragon's soul. And the holy dragon thanks Al for his help. The beam of light fades with Al and Helen left unconscious. When Al wakes up he finds himself at the guild. Phallus hugs him happy he is okay. Al asks what happened to the dragons, and Alan tells him that Euroboros was purified and the holy dragon also disappeared. Al asks Helen if she's okay after being possessed. She says that she is fine, and has also gained the ability to transform her arms and legs into dragon claws. Phallus is shocked thinking she is still possessed, but Helen shows she can freely control the power. She plans to use this power for good and save people in the future. Helen suddenly asks about Phallus's relationship with Al, not recognizing her as the princess because of her magical hairpin. Al gets a bit worried and Phallus says that they are childhood friends. The guildmaster bursts in along with Jake and his friends, they are glad that Helen is okay and amazed that Al defeated the evil dragon. They have a party to celebrate Al is victory. Luke teases Al for not drinking with them. But Phallus can read his mind, knowing that Al is thinking about harvesting his potatoes in the morning. And she tells him he should relax, and then they enjoy their night. The next morning, Tess helps Al with his harvest. He is amazed that Al can manage two separate farms. Suddenly Rick the mailman comes running by and delivers a letter to Al. It's a letter from his father telling him they haven't seen him in a while and should visit them. Al is conflicted because he is busy with too many quests from the guild. Back in the capital Al walks by a tomato stand, he is amazed because it's so delicious. He demands to know who produced it, and learns that they are from a town called La Lucas, the shopkeeper tells him they use a special fertilizer. Al dashes off arriving at the guild. He tells Helen he needs to take time off from the guild, which causes her to panic, but Al says he needs to go to the Lucas to visit his family and check out those tomatoes. He asks if some other adventurers could cover his quests, and Helen tells him that she can cover for him, revealing that she has also become an adventurer thanks to her powers. Outside the guild, he runs into Phallus. She wants to accompany Al on a quest, but he tells her about his plan to visit his parents. She gets excited and decides to tag along to meet his parents. Al fails to deter her and just quickly runs away. Al walks through the jungle getting excited as he thinks about the tomatoes. Suddenly an orc appears, but it appears to be friendly. Al remembers that male orcs are friendly toward guys, but it turns out, he You're wants to have some fun. Oh, hell no! Al runs for it but gets caught and the orc tries to start his party hard. But the orc is defeated and Al meets a young girl with blue hair. Al is traumatized from the encounter and explains this is the second time he's been attacked by an orc. <laughs> the girl tells him that the forest is dangerous, but Al tells her he is also an adventurer. The girl introduces herself as Rory, and they find out they are both heading to La Lucas. They decide to travel together but Al worries if it is okay for her to travel with a man since they will need to spend a night in the wild together. Rory jokes about cutting off his head if he tries anything. They continue on their way, and suddenly they sense danger, but it's actually just Rix who delivers another letter to Al. It's a letter from his mother, and Al reveals to Rory that he has actually been getting a ton of them, so that's why he is going there to visit his parents, but really he is going to find the special fertilizer. He then asks Rory about her family, wondering if they are worried about her being an adventurer all alone, but Rory says no one will worry about her. Rory changes the subject and decides they should set up camp. She pulls a tent out of her bag, and Al is amazed. She can fit so much into such a small bag. Al wants to know more about the bag and Rory tells him it is an heirloom left by her ancestor. Al wonders who her ancestor is but suddenly his stomach growls and they stop to make some food. Al is amazed by Rory's cooking and praises her for her use of ingredients. He then asks her why she is headed to Lucas. She reveals she is going for the training. She has heard rumors of demons appearing so she is going to investigate. Al wonders why she is doing something so dangerous, 
and she reveals she is actually the descendant of the great hero who killed the demon king. Al is amazed to learn this, but is still worried for her because she is a girl doing this all alone. Rory freezes up and is surprised someone is actually worried for her, and thanks him for caring. They decide to get some rest. In the morning they reach Lucas and they enter the town. They say farewells, but Rory tells him that she enjoyed traveling with him and wants to join him again. Al tells her to be his escort when he goes back to the capital, and she happily agrees. She draws him a map and tells him to find her when he is ready to go back. Rory asks around about the demons, but nobody has heard anything. Suddenly she hears a scream and there's a girl that claims her sister was abducted by a demon. She tells that her sister was taken into the phantom's forest, and Rory quickly goes to look for her. But there's a man that watches from a distance. Meanwhile, Al goes to visit his parents. His mother is overjoyed to see him and ends up choking him with her hugs. Al struggles to breathe, but his mother doesn't let him go. His father appears and punches him in the face thinking he is doing something to his wife, but then realizes it is just his son. His wife gets mad, dragging him back into the house and punishing him. Later, Al's father asks him about his business, and Al tells him he is there for the fertilizer. His father points out on his map where he can find it, but then asks Al about the marked location. Al tells him it's the hotel where his escort Rory is staying, but his father doesn't remember there being a hotel at that spot. Al then goes on to ask his father about the demons, but he hasn't heard anything about them. His father tells him it's time for bed, and Al quickly steals his father's bed, saying that he can't go back to his room, because his mother is waiting there. The next day, Al picks up the fertilizer and decides to go visit Rory. But Al suddenly hears screaming, and he runs into the crowd. The man says he was attacked by a demon, but says he got away thanks to a girl with blue hair. Al asks for the location and quickly runs off to find Rory. The man gets back up, and with a snap of his finger, the crowd and hotel are revealed to be an illusion. Al runs through the forest looking for Rory but finds the girl Rory had met before getting attacked by a demon. Al easily destroys the demon, and the girl thanks him, but then she also turns into a demon and attacks him. But Rory suddenly appears and saves him. She tells him that the forest is filled with these demons, but that's when the man from earlier appears, introducing himself as Loki and revealing himself to be a demon. He is amused at how Rory is so easily tricked when no one in the town has seen any demons, calling her unworthy of being the hero. Rory wonders why Al was dragged into this when he should be just after her, but Loki says, Al is actually more important than her, because he single-handedly defeated the demon General Romeo and the evil dragon. Al realizes he is one of the demon's allies, but Loki says they aren't even on his level. Rory charges at him, but he easily dodges and counterattacks. Al rushes to Rory and uses his healing magic on her. Loki is surprised by this ability and regrets not dealing with Al first. Rory apologizes to Al and says that she is no match for him, but Al tells her not to worry because he is a farmer. What? He rushes at Loki but gets thrown away. Al continues his attack but gets slammed into the ground. There is a massive crater and Al barely holds on, but he jumps back up and manages to land a punch on Loki. Loki retaliates with a punch of his own, infused with dark energy, which blows Al away. As Al falls his packages crack open. Loki's wounds begin to heal. And he can see how the other demons were no match for Al. Al also casts healing on himself and gets back up. Loki is ready to end things, but Al asks why he is targeting him. Loki explains that he is going after everyone who could pose a threat to his future plans. Besides Al and Rory, he is also going after Helen next, because she inherited the evil dragon's powers. Al is surprised to hear Helen is a target. Loki then talks about Rory, who should have the Holy God's blessing as the next hero, but she hasn't been able to use any of the Holy God's power. He decides to put things to an end and summons his worm demons. Al and Rory struggle against the worms, and Rory tells Al to make a run for it, but Al refuses and fights back against the worms, saying he wants to be the best farmer, and that he wouldn't be able to live with himself if he just left her. They finish off the worms, but Loki launches another attack. 
Al shields Rory from the magic, and there is a huge explosion. When the smoke cleared, they managed to survive but appeared badly wounded. More worms emerge as Rory is knocked away, and Al gets pinned down. Loki tells him that once the worms bite down, they never let go. He then turns to Rory to finish her off, and she thinks back to her parents encouraging her, despite others saying she couldn't be a hero. She apologizes for failing to become a hero. As Loki launches his attack to finish her off, but suddenly the worms turn white and shatter as Al gets free. He explains that this is thanks to the power of his fertilizer, which has a pesticide effect. With this, the worms are unable to regenerate. Although surprised Loki isn't worried, because Al is already so injured, but Al charges at him anyway, and he swears to protect Rory and Helen. Rory is confused about why Al is fighting so hard. She thinks back to her past, when everyone is telling her she is too weak to be the hero, and she gave up, but looking at Al is determination, she realizes that being a hero is not about being strong but it's someone who never gives up, trying to help no matter what. While Al fighting Loki, Rory manages to stab him. Loki's wound instantly heals, but Rory is determined to fight even if she can't win. Rory suddenly awakens the hero's powers, and attacks Loki with her holy slash. The attack is super effective, and Rory follows up with another slash, which finishes him off. Rory thanks Al for helping her realize what it means to be a hero, but Al collapses and exhaustion. While he sleeps on her lap, Rory confesses that she has a crush on him. It becomes night, and Al finally wakes up. They have an awkward moment, and Rory thanks Al once again but ends up getting embarrassed. They decide to head back to the town. But as they walk they suddenly hear a strange sound. The sound gets louder and Rory gets scared, saying she can't handle ghosts. It's a voice that calls for Al and it turns out to be his mother looking for him. Al realizes it's his mother, not wanting to be caught with Rory, he says they should run for it. He picks her up and quickly runs away. Al is relieved when they get away, and Rory laughs at him seeing that there is something he is scared of, and Al can only imagine this side of his mother. They end up back in town and are shocked when they find that the hotel is no longer there, realizing it was Loki's illusion. Rory finds another place to stay, and Al tells her he will be heading back to the capital the next day. As Al heads back home, he remembers a time when he went out to play with Tessa without telling his parents, and his mother came looking for him. They were scared to get in trouble so they snuck home, but when he got back she was waiting for him at the door. Al wonders if she can somehow teleport. As Al gets back to the house his mother is once again waiting for him. He tries to avoid her, but she suddenly appears behind him. Al is terrified and runs. He runs straight past his father into his room, which causes his father to panic, as he is left to deal with his mother. The next day, his mother begs him not to leave. And Al has no choice except to say that he will not come again if she behaves like this. And she immediately lets him go. Al heads off and meets up with Rory, and they head back to the capital. Meanwhile, back in the capital, Phallus has an emotional goodbye with her father, the king. And he apologizes for failing her. Al and Rory make it back to the guild, and Helen gets jealous of Rory's relationship with Al, even flexing her demonic powers. The next day in the fields, a boy is picking some of the fruits, but Al catches him. Rory and Helen arrive to help on the farm, but Al is losing it at the boy. The girls are surprised Al is so angry but he is just annoyed that his fruit was picked before they were ready for harvest, and he yells at the boy. The boy apologizes, and his stomach growls. Al gives him a cabbage instead, and the boy is blown away, the boy is brought to tears by its taste and happily runs off. Helen mentions that while Al was away, there have been monster attacks, which have blocked off trade with other countries and caused the price of food to increase, making it hard on the poor. They suddenly hear a bell signaling a monster attack, and they quickly head over to help out. The city is being attacked by a huge swarm of monsters. While the guards and adventurers struggle to defend, Helen shows off her demonic transformation and fights with her new demonic powers. Al charges with his hoe and sends the monsters flying. But eventually, they begin to get overwhelmed by the seemingly endless number of monsters, 
but suddenly knights from the kingdom of Andesburg arrive, threatening the monsters to leave, or else face the wrath of their holy sword levitate, the monsters all back away and retreat. While Al is surprised there is a sword that can repel monsters. Later that night, Al polishes his trusty hoe, and Phallus visits to say goodbye. Al is confused about what she means, and she tells him that she will not be returning. Their meeting is cut short as her maid tells her it's time to go. She thanks him for everything, and Al is left feeling confused. A few days later, the monsters have stopped attacking, and things are back to normal. Al is visited by the young boy and his mother. The mother apologizes for her son and tells Al that if he ever needs a tailor he can visit her in town. They end up buying more vegetables from Al, and as they leave, Al is suddenly surprised by Rick's appearance. Al gets another letter from his mother, and Rick also gives him a copy of the paper, which shocks him as he reads it. At the guild, Helen and Rory are also looking at the paper. They learn that Phallus is getting married to the Prince of Andersburg. Helen wonders if it's a political marriage to get Andersburg to protect their country. Rory finds it strange how the monsters retreated from the knights because monsters aren't supposed to be able to understand human words. Al suddenly arrives and tells them to read his letter. It's filled with his mother saying she loves him and Al gets embarrassed and rips it up. He hands them another page, and the girls read his mother's report on the monster attacks. She had heard of the attacks and did her own investigation to ensure Al was safe, but she found out that the Holy Sword of Antisburg is just a regular sword. Without any special powers, the girls are shocked at how she could know this, but Al tells them to keep reading. They learn his mother was able to figure this out because she used to be the commander of the Shadow Puppets. They are suddenly shocked to hear the Shadow Puppets, but Al is clueless about what that means. They tell him that the Shadow Puppets are the most elite group of spies, able to discover any secret. Al is shocked to hear this about his mother, and they continue to read on. It turns out the monsters were being summoned by a demon in Andersburg but his beloved was taken and he was forced to send the monsters to attack. They conclude that Andesburg sent the monsters to attack so they could pose as protectors and demand the marriage of Princess Phallus. Al is determined to save the princess but this actually surprises the girls because Phallus had always used her disguise magic when they were together. Al quickly corrects himself saying that as citizens it is their duty to save the princess and manages to win them over. Helen tells him it would be hard to get into Andersburg, but Al reveals he has recruited Rick as their guide. Meanwhile, in the kingdom of Andersburg, we meet Prince Nautilus as he meets with various leaders, who wants his protection from the monster attacks. He says that there is only so much he can do with one holy sword, and they all try to offer him exceptional deals for his protection. Later, Nautilus is overjoyed with how his plan is going and orders the demon Gazelle to attack even more countries. But Gazelle wants to stop the attacks, not wanting to see more of his comrades be sacrificed, but Nautilus beats him and reminds him that he has his girlfriend captured. Phallus suddenly comes in and tells him he can't treat his servants like that. A guard comes in and reports that there is a delay on the carriage for their ceremony, and the prince loses it, but realizing that Phallus is watching, he tries to compose himself and tells her he is looking forward to their ceremony. Phallus returns to her room and wishes she could see Al again, but Nautilus is outside and wonders who she is thinking about. The next day, Al visits the tailor to pick up some outfits and promises to bring them more vegetables. Al joins up with the others, and Rick tells them the plan. He tells them to pose as his merchants for the ceremony to get in and find the hostage while he gathers monsters so they can expose Prince Nautilus's holy sword as a fake. Helen is confused about how he can gather monsters. And Rick reveals he is actually a demon. They're all shocked, and Rick explains he is also a member of the Shadow Puppets and was taken in by Al, his mother, when he was young. He reveals that there are quite several demons that blend in with humans. And apparently, the demon being threatened fell in love with a human girl but ended up in the hands of the prince. Al swears they will save everyone and they commence their mission. They arrive at Andersburg and successfully make it past the gates. Al is confident with their disguise, posing as farmers, but the girls are not very impressed. They go over their plan, 
which is to sneak into the castle and rescue Gazelle's sweetheart and then take her to the church so they can get Gazelle to confess that the Holy Sword's power is fake. As Al heads to the castle, he is instantly stopped by a guard. He says he is delivering vegetables to the castle, thinking his plan is foolproof, but the guard finds him suspicious and they end up getting chased by all the guards. Helen tells Al to go on ahead and throws him into the castle. Al happens to land exactly in the right room and tells the girl to come with him so they can save Gazelle. The guards come running in but Al uses his vegetables and handles the guards. The girl is chained down and can't run, so Al carries her while he runs from the guards. Al ends up meeting up with the other two but they have to quickly run as they are getting chased by all the guards. They see the church and the girls tell Al to save Phallus while they handle the guards. Inside the church, the ceremony is underway and Phallus says I do and as they go in for the kiss, Nautilus is suddenly hit by the door as Al bursts in. Phallus is overjoyed to see him but Nautilus says that Al is a villain here to capture the princess. Al then tells everyone that the prince is the villain and his holy sword is a fake. Nautilus asks if he has any proof, and even the king tells Al that he has seen the sword's power, but Al says he has proof. A guard suddenly reports that the kingdom is under attack by monsters. We see Rick as he summons the monsters to attack the guests. They tell Nautilus to use the sword, but as he calls for Gazelle, he sees him reunited with his beloved. Rick brings the prince the holy sword, but he hesitates to grab it. Al says it's a fake and throws it at a monster, which destroys it with a single bite. Gazelle then reveals the truth to everyone, he controls the monsters with a demon flute and says he was blackmailed by the prince to send monsters to attack the other countries. The king asks Nautilus for the truth, but he just laughs and says they realize too late, and he has already sent a huge swarm of monsters to attack the capital. Gazelle is confused because he never made such a command, but Nautilus says you can lure monsters in by just spreading monster carcasses. Nautilus then quotes, saying it's already too late. But Ruri and Helen burst in and say that the capital won't fall so easily. After the last battle with the monsters, the guards and adventurers had asked Ruri to retrain them. We see them as they hold their ground against the monsters. The king cries in gratitude, and El tells Phallus she doesn't need to get married. The guards come rushing in, and Nautilus orders them to capture the intruders, but they all throw down their weapons, and Ruri and Helen reveal that the guards switched sides after they explained the prince's evil deeds to them. Nautilus is outraged and charges at the king, but he gets stopped by a radish, and Al beats him up. Nautilus is taken away, and Phallus jumps on Al, telling him that she loves him. Ruri is confused and jealous of the princess. Al tries to say it's all a misunderstanding, but even the king thanks him and welcomes him into the family. As the king leaves, he is stopped by Rick, who hands him a letter proving that Nautilus was just a pawn for someone else. He warns the king to be careful. After that, they all celebrated at the guild. The guild master tells Al that everyone has been requesting him for quests, but Al reminds him he just wants to be a farmer. Phallus visits the guild and rewards the adventurers for their help in defending the capital. Helen wonders why it feels like she knows the princess, and Al panics. Phallus returns in her disguise, and Al can't handle keeping the secret. Phallus officially meets Rory and declares that she is the one who will be with Al. Al can't handle them and just leaves to tend to his crops. He harvests his vegetables, but Rory and Phallus have followed him there. They ask who he likes more, but Al just tries to distract them by talking about his vegetables. Ruri wonders if there is someone else that he likes, and Al says that there is. The girls are shocked to hear this. That one there was a violation, personally I wouldn't have it. But Al quickly runs away. Back at his house, Al looks at a photo and reminisces over a girl called Olivia. <laughs> there is a flashback to 15 years ago, as we see Al is father harvesting potatoes. He becomes shocked when he sees that Al has harvested so many. Al is overjoyed but his mother gets mad that his father is making him work too much. Al ends up taking some of the potatoes to give to their neighbors, but suddenly they notice a girl being chased by two men. The girl is a thief and Al wonders who she is. The neighbors tell him she is an orphan who lives in the mountain, and the men want to sell her off. 
The girl bites the man and gets free. She runs right past, grabs the basket of potatoes, and runs off. Hey, yo, what the, the girl stuffs herself with the potatoes, but Al finds her. She runs away but notices that Al has food, and he tells her that the potatoes are better when cooked in soup. She is scared of him but Al leaves the soup behind, and she can't resist it. Over the next few days, Al keeps bringing her food and eventually, she waits for him and they have a chance to talk. She introduces herself as Olivia and is amazed that Al grew such delicious food. Al is stomach suddenly growls and she offers to share the sandwich. But Olivia is suddenly caught by the two men and they prepare to sell her off. Al says that she has stopped stealing, but the men tell him that they need to recoup their losses. Al begs them to let her go, saying that he will pay back everything she stole. But, the men don't believe him and refuse, but Al's father appears and learns about the situation. He offers the men three months worth of rice as compensation, and they happily accept and leave. Al wonders if they will be okay, but his father gets worried about what his mother will say. He suggests that they will need to cut back on food for the next few months. Olivia returns the potatoes she stole, and Al's father suggests that they could use some extra hands on the farm. Al happily agrees and invites Olivia to live with them on the farm, and she is overjoyed. Two years later, Olivia helps out on the farm together with Al. She wants to take a break, but Al loves his farming. He tells her to play with the other kids, but she says that she only wants to be with him. Suddenly, Tessa comes running, getting chased by some killer bees, but Al's mother easily fights them all off, cutting them into pieces. His mother tells him that they are headed off to the capital to look for a new house. Al thinks it's strange because their house is just fine, but his parents tell him to look after the farm while they are away. His parents leave and Al asks Tessa why he was getting chased by the bees when there should be none in the area. Tessa reveals a map saying that there is a great treasure in the forest nearby. The forest is usually dangerous, but since all the bees are gone, Tessa suggests that they can find the treasure. Al becomes convinced, and Olivia asks to come along, but Al tells her it could be dangerous and he leaves her behind. Along the way, Al wonders why Olivia is always clinging to him, thinking that she should make friends with the other kids. Tessa reveals that Olivia actually gets bullied when she is by herself. Al is shocked to hear this, and realizes this was the reason why his parents were looking for a new house. The two arrive at the location on the map and they step on a stone that opens up the mountain and they fall inside. They have a look around and find a stone with an unknown language written on it. As Al touches it, it begins to glow, and everything goes dark. An enormous beast appears and Al gets devoured. There is a volcano eruption that rains fire down, and when Al wakes up, he sees Olivia, but he suddenly feels a sharp pain in his chest. Tessa comes in and Al wonders what happened in the forest. They go outside and find everything destroyed and covered with ash. The bridge out of town is also destroyed so they have no way of getting help from the capital. Food is being rationed out, but there isn't enough to go around. Al checks the farm for food but it's all been destroyed. Al suddenly feels the pain once again and falls to the ground, but he still worries about finding food for Olivia. Later that night, Olivia sneaks into the elder's tent to steal food but she remembers Al begging for her second chance and telling her that he loves seeing people enjoy his vegetables, so she manages to stop herself. The next day, Olivia combines their food and gives it all to Al. Al asks why there is more food than normal, and she lies to him, telling him that food arrives from the capital. Al is glad, and Olivia says she can't wait to eat the food that he will grow. In the following days, Olivia keeps giving out her food. And eventually, she passes out while thinking of him. Al wonders where Olivia is gone, and Tessa rushes in and tells Al that they found Olivia's body. Tessa tells him that she starved, but Al is confused thinking that they got food from the capital. Testa tells him that they haven't even heard from the capital. And Al realizes what Olivia did for him. Al cries for her and blames himself for her death.
Al remembers his promise to grow vegetables for her and he gets back to work. One day, after one-shotting a dragon, Al comes across an unconscious girl lying on the ground, and he ends up taking her back to his house. When Al wakes up, he sees the girl is up, and she asks how she got here and wonders if he kidnapped her. Al tries to explain that he isn't a bad boy and was just worried when he found her. The girl explains she was on her way to the guild to issue a quest. Then Al offers to take her. Al introduces himself, and the girl reveals her name is Linnea. Later, Rory comes to visit but sees Linnea and becomes flustered, seeing her wearing Al as clothes. Rory misunderstands and runs away crying and calling him a jerk. They end up at the guild, where Helen listens to Linnea's request. She says there is something strange going on in her town but finds it hard to explain. Helen thinks the request is too vague, but Al ends up accepting the quest when Linnea reveals she is from Galia town. Al is shocked, he loses it because Galia is known for having the best asparagus in the world, and he can't wait to go there. They prepare to head off, but Linnea is confused. Why is Al being so nice to her? She thinks he must have an ulterior motive because her father taught her that men are like wolves. Al tries to assure her, and although she still thinks he is a bit sus, she decides to trust him. Meanwhile, Rory is watching and gets jealous. They get a ride to Galia, but along the way, an orc chases after them. Al freaks out, but the driver isn't too worried. But when he looks back, there's a whole horde chasing them, and Al has emotional damage from his past encounters. <laughs> when Al wakes up, he notices he is wearing a pendant. Linnea tells him it's a pendant that helps with soothing the nerves. They make it to the town, and when they pass through, Al finds it strange that the guards are holding mops. In the market, Al sees a stall and quickly orders an asparagus skewer as it gets cooked. Al tries to ask if the man has noticed anything strange going on. The man says everything is fine and gives out his food, but it's completely burnt. Al is confused, but then realizes that the man is acting strange. A cart suddenly tips over, and when Al checks on the man, he is also acting strange. Al suddenly gets picked up and carried away. Later, Al visits Linnea's house, her family runs a pendant shop, and she thinks it's thanks to the pendants that she is not acting strange like the rest of the townspeople. Al asks where her parents are, but she tells him that they went missing when the anomaly began. The townspeople are all acting crazy and can't communicate normally. The lord of the town appears, and Al is honored to meet the man who started the asparagus revolution. He also wears a pendant, and Al asks him about the town. The lord tells him it's a long story and invites him for dinner, but Al gets picked up and carried off again. Later, they visit the Lord's house and join him for dinner. Al asks about the town, but the Lord suddenly has his guards around Al in an instant. But Al defeats all the guards easily. He charges at the Lord, but Linnea gets in the way. The Lord reveals that Linnea is working for him, and we see he is possessed by a demon. The demon reveals that he put his power into a crystal and put it into the goddess statue in town so he can control everyone. He plans to do the same to the capital. But after he heard about Al defeating the demon general and the evil dragon, he planned to put a crystal into Al, his body, and control the capital. Linnea reveals she had no choice because her parents were taken hostage. As the demon prepares to put the crystal into Al, he throws a flashbang which doesn't seem to do anything, but there is an explosion, and the goddess statue is destroyed. The demon is confused about what happened, and Al explains the flashbang was just a signal to his friends. The demon is shocked because Linnea was spying on him this whole time. But Al reveals that when he got carried away in the town, it was actually Ruri and Helen. They even saved Linnea's parents. Al tells him it's over, but the demon takes the Lord as his hostage. Al uses the power of asparagus and forces the Lord to eat it. He reminds the Lord of his love for asparagus, and then the Lord breaks free from the demon's control. Al takes the chance and finishes him off. Linnea thanked him for his help and then, she kissed him, much to Rory's dismay. She declares that when she gets older, she will find him and win him over, even if he is with another girl. Oh! Al is left stunned. 
And when he left, she said, when I see you again, I will kiss you on the lips. <laughs> yeah, boy. After that, Al was back in the capital and he was tending his field with Rory, Helen, and Phallus all helping him out. Phallus notices the pendants that Helen and Rory both got and gets jealous. She wants to confess to Al again, but Rory reminds her they want to give Al some space. Suddenly, they hear Al screaming. He is devastated to find that some weeds have grown among his crops. It's a pesky weed that sucks up all the nutrients from the surrounding crops. He is outraged to find that so much has grown under his watch. Helen is amused that weeds are a bigger threat than the demons he has faced. They head into the city to sell their vegetables. They are quite popular, and even the king comes in disguise. The king wonders when Al will take Phallus as his wife, but Al avoids the topic. The king tells him he will give him even more farmland and newly developed farming tools. Al imagines the tools and can't help but be enticed. Rory tries to stop him, and Phallus throws a potato at her, but it ends up knocking out Al. Al sees an angelic figure trying to talk to him, but he soon wakes up. They sell all the vegetables, and Al gets an evil look as he thinks about destroying the weeds. He runs into Rick and shows off the herbicide he is going to destroy the weeds with. They suddenly see some men capturing a girl to sell off. Al approaches them and easily knocks the two men out. The third guy runs away, and the girl is revealed to be a demon. The girl is scared, but Rick recognizes her as Urea and shows her he is also a demon. Rick's reveals that Urea is the daughter of the demon lord. Urea begs for their help to save the demons. And she reveals that her attendant Volti suddenly told her that she wasn't safe. He then opened a portal and sent her away. She wants to go back and save the demons, but Rick says that the demon territory is on the other side of the ocean and it would take at least three days on a boat. Al takes on the job and hands his pesticide to Rick so he can look after his crops. Al tells them that he has a faster way to get there and he ends up carrying Urea as he runs over the water. Urea freaks out and tells him to stop, but Al says they will sink if he stops. They end up making it to the demon territory, and Urea is thankful they got there so quickly. Volti suddenly appears and starts attacking them. Al manages to stop the attack, but Volti continues to attack with his magic and even shoots at Urea. Al manages to get behind him and knocks him out. Urea is confused about why he was attacking her. Volti gets back up and charges up another attack, but suddenly, Al's mother appears and knocks him out. She reveals that she heard from Rick and came to make sure he was okay. They head off together and arrive at the Demon Lord's castle. They find that all the guards are dead, and Al wonders what happened. His mother thinks that they were controlled to fight each other just like how Volti appeared to be controlled. Urea rushes into the throne room and finds her father lying on the ground. Al finds a guard that's still alive. And he reveals that there was a girl. He suddenly warns him as Al, his mother tries to attack her, but is stopped by Al. Al can tell that she isn't his mother because his real mother would have hugged him so hard his bones would shatter the moment she saw him. She is amazed he could see through her perfect disguise. She returns to her true form, and she's revealed that she is actually Olivia, and she misses him so much. And Al is shocked at how she is still alive. He's thinking back to when he witnessed her death, and Olivia reveals that she is alive thanks to the power of the evil god. She shows off her power attacking Urea, but Al dives in and manages to save her. There is a huge slash and explosion, and when the dust clears, the whole mountain has been blown away. Olivia is surprised that Al managed to dodge her attack and says, it must be because he also has the evil god's power in his body. Al is confused what she means, and Olivia explains that his nature lover skill that boosted all his stats is actually a skill from the evil god. Al doesn't believe it because he has never met the evil god, but Olivia tells him that he has. She promises to explain everything if Al decides to join her. She tells him that they can live together again, and she persuades him using her enchanting eyes, but Urea calls to him, and he snaps out of it. Olivia gets annoyed at her for getting in the way and grabs Urea by her neck. Al tries to help her, but Olivia stops him. 
She tells him if he accepts the evil god's power, she can let her live. Yuria tells Al to run, and Olivia gets fed up with her and decides to finish her off. Al gets free and before Olivia can attack, Alice Pendant suddenly activates. When Al opens his eyes, he finds that time is frozen. Al is confused what is going on, but the angelic figure appears before him once again. She introduces herself as the god of good. She tells him that thanks to his pendant anti-evil, she was able to appear. She froze time with her power but they didn't have long. She tells him she can destroy the evil god's power within him and give him her own power, which will allow him to fight. She takes his hand and grants him her power. She turns the time back before Olivia can attack Yuria. Al activates his new power. Olivia gets worried, but it just makes a bunch of sprouts pop up. Everyone is confused, and Olivia thinks it's a lame skill but it grows rapidly, and Olivia gets caught by its vines. She is able to break free and summons a sword. She charges at Al but he uses his power again, creating a wall of vines to protect himself. The vines grab onto her again, and despite cutting them down, they grow back and bind her. Volti comes rushing in and attacks using his magic. He checks up on Yuria, and she is glad he is back to normal. Olivia seems fine and retaliates with her own magic. She dashes past Al and goes to finish him off, but Al begs her to stop. She says that she's become bored and says they will meet again soon when it's just the two of them. Dark energy surrounds her, and she disappears. Volti violently questions Al his relationship with Olivia, but the king reminds him that he just saved all of them. Al explains that she is his little sister and tries to explain her connection with the evil god, but the king doesn't have much information about the evil god, and promises to contact him if he finds anything out. Yuria gets sad that Al is leaving and hugs him, but Bothy gets jealous of them and accuses Al of trying to seduce her. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. He gets back to the farm and finds Tessa helping with his crops. He explains everything that happened and asks if he remembers the time they explored the ruin, but Tessa only remembers him passing out and didn't see the beast that appeared. Al is disappointed to hear this. Al thanks him for helping out and tells him to visit the capital with him. Tessa says he is too busy with his fishing. As Al heads back to the capital, he takes the shortcut but once again attracts an orc. He has had enough and decides to face it head on. We tired of playing with your ass, nigga. Today your ass is gonna die, bitch. He punches it with all his strength, but it only gets knocked down, and Al is shocked. It gets back up, and Al runs for his life. He gets saved by his adventurer friends, and they wonder if he has gotten weaker because he's still having trouble with orcs. Al thinks it's strange, and they get back to the guild. He tells Helen and Rory, and they are confused how an orc could survive his punch. Helen asks to see Al is status, and we see that his overwhelming strength is gone. Al realizes that when the goddess gave him her power, she removed the evil god skill that was boosting his stats. Helen tells him not to worry because he is still much stronger than the average adventurer. Rick appears and delivers another letter from his mother. Helen and Rory peek at it but there is a warning to them about making a move on Al, and they wonder if his mother has people watching them as the former commander of the Shadow Puppets. Al continues to read on as she promises to investigate Olivia and tells him he is always welcome home. Who's laughing now? and then just goes on telling him how much she loves him. As Rick leaves, he runs into Phallus. She wants to hang out with Al, but Rory and Helen both get jealous. As they all hang out, Al continues to wonder why Olivia suddenly appeared and what the evil god is after, but he tries to enjoy himself with the friends that he has made. He thinks back to how he met each of them and the adventures that they've had. He is determined to get stronger so he can protect them and protect his crops, because he is a farmer. <laughs> oh sorry, this video has ended. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next anime. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel to make me love you more.
If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to let the world know about our love for anime.